Good evening class. Tonight we will be continuing with our lecture on chapter 4, Obligations of the Vendor. We will be talking about section 3, Conditions and Warranties. First, let us define what a condition is. So a condition is an uncertain event or contingency on the happening of which the obligation or right of the contract depends. In such a case, the obligation of the contract does not attach until the condition is performed. So remember, in a de the definition of a condition is not something new to you. Uh, we have already studied conditions before uh, when we talked about the different kinds of obligation under Section 1, Chapter 3 of the Law on Obligations. So pinag-usapan na natin yung pure and conditional obligation. So you have learned already that there are several kinds of condition. And um, itong uh, condition na to, which the law refers to here in this specific provision, uh, remember, is yung suspensive condition. So, uh, suspensive condition, the happening of which will give rise to an obligation, meaning kung hindi pa nangyayari yung condition, wala munang obligation na kailangang i-perform. So, this, the same is true with this definition. As you can see here, the obligation of the contract does not attach until the condition is performed. Kailangan mo nang mangyari yung condition so that the obligation, there will be an obligation under an existing contract. So anyway, please take note of the difference between a condition imposed on the perfection of the contract and also a condition which is imposed on the performance of an obligation. So anyway, 1545 talks about a condition which is imposed on the performance of the obligation. Kasi if the condition is imposed on the perfection, what you have to remember is, kung hindi nangyari yung condition, no contract of sale is perfected. Kasi nga, imposed siya sa perfection. So kung hindi uh, nangyari yung condition, wala tayong pag-uusapan na contract of sale kasi nga hindi nagkaroon ng perfection. Now, if the condition is imposed merely on the performance of the obligation, um, Remember, there's already an existing contract of a sale. Meron na talaga, meron na napag-usapan. But remember class here that the obligation will not attach hanggat hindi nangyayari yung uh, condition. Uh, so anyway, let us say for example, um, meron ng existing contract of sale between buyer and seller. Buyer pays a down payment and uh, meron siyang uh, undertaking to pay the balance when the seller gets rid or evicts yung mga squatter dun sa uh, lupa or yung parcel of land na binenta. So what if the seller fails to evict the squatters? Let us say the seller is given 30 days to evict the squatters but he failed to do so. So remember in this case, the buyer has two options. So these are the effect of non-fulfillment of conditions under 1545. So uh, the buyer, in our example, may refuse to proceed with the contract. O oh, wag na nating ituloy kasi hindi mo naman mapalayas yung mga uh, squatter. So kung hindi mo sila mapalayas, ako pa kaya na buyer, mapapalayas ko kaya sila. So the buyer can refuse to proceed with the contract. Kasi syempre magastos magpalayas ng mga squatter through a uh, legal means, matagal pa. And um, maintindihan niyo naman yung buyer if the buyer would like to... Um, uh, withdraw from the agreement. Now also, yung buyer can proceed with the contract waiving the performance of the condition. So, anong gusto ng buyer sa pangalawa? Anong option niya? Sige, tuloy na lang natin yung uh, contract and kahit na hindi na mangyari yung condition, remember that the buyer will still do his obligation to pay yung balance noong uh, purchase price. So remember here class at the, the failure of the seller to comply with the condition with the condition does not result in the failure of the contract. So hindi naman nagfail yung contract and anyway the contract has already been uh, perfected. But uh, it will only give the option uh, to the buyer to either refuse to proceed with the contract or to waive the condition which is uh, imposed on the performance. Now, um, yung condition is the operative act which will set in motion yung period of uh, compliance of the buyer with his own obligation 
to settle the balance of the purchase uh, price. So, yun ang tandaan nyo dyan. So, if the obligation of either party is subject to any condition and the condition is not fulfilled, may choice ang party to refuse to proceed with the contract or proceed and waive your own condition. Also, take note that uh, if the condition is in the nature of a promise that it should happen, the non-performance of uh, the condition may be treated by the other party as a breach of a warranty. So, what is an example of that? Let us say, class, uh, the seller sells to you a subdivision uh, lot. Tapos, uh, the seller also promised uh, to construct, uh, let us say, uh, roads para nga naman mayroong dadaanan papunta dun sa subdivision lot mo na binili mula doon sa seller. So, uh, here, remember that the, if the seller fails to uh, construct yung mga uh, road papunta dun sa iyong uh, lot, the buyer may treat the non-performance of the promise of the seller as a breach of warranty. Because, uh, remember class, that if you will uh, sell a thing, you must, kung ikaw yung seller, you must deliver it in a condition suitable for the uh, enjoyment of the buyer and for the purposes uh, for which the buyer uh, bought the property. Siyempre, para namang ewan kung bumili nga ng lupa ang buyer sa isang subdivision but he has no access to it. So, papano ang kanyang enjoyment and also uh, use doon sa land which he has purchased. So, here, remember that the buyer may treat this um, um, condition, uh, non-fulfillment or non-performance of condition as a breach of warranty. Also, take note that uh, here in uh, number two, conditions may be considered as warranties. Now, anyway, we have already um, mentioned kung ano yung, yung word na warranties. Ano nga ba naman kasi ang warranty? Now, what are warranties? So, warranties are statements or representation made by the seller of the goods contemporaneously and as a part of the contract of a sale, having reference to the character, quality, or title of the goods and by which he promises or undertakes to ensure that certain facts are or shall be as he then represents them. So, pagka warranties, remember, there are, they are statements or representations made by the seller. So, anong pinagkaiba nga naman kasi ng condition at saka ng warranty? So, remember, a condition must be stipulated by the parties to form part of a contract. Unlike in a warranty, unlike in warranties, remember, they form part of the obligation by express provision of law. Remember, they are natural elements. Now, uh, your own conditions may attach him, uh, itself either to the uh, obligation of the seller, pwedeng magkaroon ng condition bago i-perform ng seller ang kanyang obligation, or um, it can attach to the buyer. Mayroon mo ng condition na kailangang mangyari before the buyer performs an obligation under the contract like in our example a while ago now um pagdating ng warranty remember whether it is expressed or implied it only relates to the obligation of the seller so seller lamang talaga ang nagbibigay ng uh, warranties as uh, strictly defined in the law so anyway ang mga warranties remember kinds may be expressed or also later on you will know that they may be implied so, Article 1546 uh, defines express warranties. Any affirmation of fact or any promise by the seller relating to the thing, the natural tendency of which is to induce the buyer to purchase the thing and the buyer thus induced, thus purchase the same. So, in case of uh, ex an express warranty, so talagang sinabi ng uh, seller na ito ang, uh, ito ang kayang gawin ng um object na ito, ito ang purpose niya, pwede siya sa ganito, pwede siya sa ganyan, ako ang may-ari niyan. So, remember, these are express warranties. Now, ang tendency kasi dahil mayroong warranties, nagkakaroon ng um, inducement or naiinganyo yung buyer na bumili noong uh, object na binebenta ng uh, seller. And dahil nga naiinganyo na siya, 
binilinga niya yung uh, object na yon. So, this will include all warranties derived from the language of the contract so long as the language is expressed. So, pwedeng ang warranty ay isang affirmation. Oo, ito nga yan. Kaya niya yan. Ganito. Kaya niyang gawin yan. Pwede ito sa ganyan. It may take the form of a promise or also a representation. So, yun ang uh, express warranties. Now, also take note of yung uh, implied warranties under 1357. We will talk about this more uh, later on. So, yung uh, implied warranty, that which the law derives by implication or inference from the nature of the transaction or the relative situation or circumstances of the parties, irrespective of any intention of the seller to create it. So, um, by law, uh, nandiyan yung mga implied uh, warranties which we will discuss more of later on. Maraming klase ito. Um, these are the, in short, warranties provided by uh, law. So anyway, the effect of an express warranty, um, it is immaterial whether or not the seller knows that it is true or false. Kasi minsan, mga seller... Ah, ito yan, kaya niya garito, kaya niya gawin ng sasakyan na ito yan, kaya niya tumakbo sa expressway ng garito, kabilis, ganyan, ganyan, pwedeng ipang racing yan. Pero itong si seller, sa totoo lang, hindi naman talaga niya alam kung kaya ng uh, object yan or hindi. But remember, if it turns out na hindi pala kaya ng gawin ng uh, object na binebenta niya yan, uh, remember, class, that uh, the seller will be liable for his warranty. So, no intent is necessary to make the seller liable, um, immaterial, whether or not uh, the seller knows that it is true or false. So, kahit na hindi alam ng seller na hindi naman pala totoo, immaterial. But uh, remember here that the seller is liable for his uh, express warranty. Sinabi niya yun eh, na kaya ng object niya yun eh, na, kaya, na ito ay para sa ganitong purpose, kaya niya itong purpose. Sinabi niya eh. Tapos bigla hindi kaya gawin. Whether or not um, aware siya na kaya or hindi kaya gawin ng object, fit for this particular purpose or not. Still, because he expressly stated that it can do these things, etc., uh, seller is liable. So, ang liability niya is based on uh, the natural tendency of the buyer to rely doon sa kanyang uh, representations uh, made. So, Ang importante dito, nag-rely yung buyer doon sa kanyang representation. So anyway, uh, take note also of the uh, effect of expressions of opinion. So pagka meron tayong expressions of opinion, uh, remember, uh, even no matter how positively it is asserted, it is not a warranty. So tandaan nyo yan. So... Um, sabi pa nga natin noon sa obligations, if in case the opinion turns out not to be true, it is not fraudulent in itself. Yan. So, um, obviously, it does not import a warranty also. Now, uh, there is an exception here. If the seller is an expert and his opinion is relied upon by the uh, buyer in making his uh, purchase. So, remember class that uh, expert opinion may um, result into a warranty given by the uh, seller. So anyway, um, what else? Take note also of the effect of dealer's stock. So again, yung dealer's stock, the law gives us, the, gives yung seller yung sufficient leeway pagdating sa pagbebenta ng uh, goods nila. Siyempre, ang mga seller, you will expect them to build up their uh, goods. Itong, uh, ano na to, blender na to, this is excellent, this is uh, best quality in the entire world. So, Siyempre, ganyan ang sasabihin na, alangan naman sabihin, ang pangit ng blender, ang pangit ng washing machine na to, hindi gumagana yan, pagka mainit na, pagka ano, pagka masyadong maraming sabon, maba, ano, um, na nag stock yung mga, mga motor niya. Alam nga namang sabihin ng seller yun. Siyempre, ang lagi niya sasabihin, this is excellent, this is beautiful, this is uh, perfect for the purpose, etc., etc., which you wanted to operate yet. So, um, dealer stock, uh, again, these are not fraudulent in themselves. This is allowed. 
um, and in accordance with the principle of caveat uh, emptor. So, it is considered, cannot be considered pala as an express warranty. So, pagka, ay, sobrang ganda nito, sobrang perfect ng ketsetra, hindi warranty yan. So, expect mo na na sasabihin ng uh, seller na maganda yung kanyang product. So, what else? Uh, take note also of, um, ano pa ba? Uh, implied warranties in a sale. So, implied warranties, again, uh, we have already defined them a while ago. So, uh, warranties provided by uh, law and remember class this term yung implied warranties na term is reserved for cases where the law attaches an obligation to the seller which is not expressed in any words so remember again that an implied warranty is a natural element of a contract it is not an essential element so it is presumed to exist even if nothing has been uh, stated in the contract. But uh, remember, because this is a natural element, it, is, um, it may be waived by, uh, or modified by express stipulation of the parties. Kasi nga, di ba, ang kailangan lang naman talaga sa mga contract of sale ay mga uh, essential elements, cause, object, and uh, consent. But uh, remember here, meron pa rin natural elements ang mga contracts. Yung mga natural elements are deemed incorporated in the contract of a sale. But uh, since they are not essential but merely natural, they may be waived or modified by an express stipulation. So kung gusto nyong i-waive yung mga warranties, there must be an express stipulation. So anyway, these are the implied warranties in a sale. Marami yan. Um, which we will discuss uh, later on. So, wa implied warranty as to the seller's title. So, 1547 and 48 in relation to 1459 and uh, 1562, 1459 we have already discussed. 1562 which we will discuss later on. Um, so, again, ilang beses ko nang sinabi to siguro pang lima beses ko nang sasabihin to tapos bigla tatanungin ko na naman sa klasiko hindi na naman nila alam so anyway, the seller guarantees that he has a right to sell the thing sold and to transfer ownership to the buyer and uh, who shall not be disturbed in his legal and peaceful possession uh, thereof so remember class here that the right of uh, the seller to sell the thing must be present not at the time of perfection of the contract sinabi ko na noon ito uulitin ko na naman ngayon the right of the seller to sell the thing is not necessary at the time of perfection of the contract or differently stated the seller does not need to be the owner of the thing at the time of perfection of the contract but take note class that it is sufficient that at the time when ownership is to pass that the vendor is already the owner of the thing or is at least authorized to transfer ownership. So, at the time of a uh, delivery, dun lamang required ang ownership or at least authority to transfer ownership. Yun ay 1459, which I have already discussed. Ulit-ulit na. And what else? Take note also uh, in 1562, uh, kaya ako nilagay yan dyan sale of future goods kaya inalaw ang sale ng future goods kasi obviously dahil future goods pa yan the seller is not the owner yet pero inalaw ang sale ng future goods because remember again at the time of perfection ownership of the seller is not required but at the time of delivery dun lamang required ang ownership or at least authority to transfer ownership also take note of the implied warranty against hidden defects or unknown encumbrance. So seller guarantees that the thing sold is free from any hidden faults or defects or any charge or encumbrance not declared or known by the buyer. We will discuss this later on. Also take note of the implied warranty as to fitness or merchantability. Magkaiba yung dalawang yan. So seller will guarantee that the thing sold is reasonably fit for the known particular purpose for which it was acquired by the buyer. Yan ang, um, yan ang 
warranty as to fitness. So, if um, it is bought by description, it is fit for a general purpose or it is merchantable quality. So, yun ang uh, uh, yun yung warranty of merchantability which we will talk of again when we go to uh, 1562. So, take note also class that implied warranties are not applicable in case of as is and where is sale. So, usually ito nakikita ko sa mga deed of sale ng sasakyan. As is, where is. So, kung ano yung condition ng sasakyan, um, where it is, um, how it is now, etc. Yun ang... Um, Yun ang, the, the buyer will receive it as is and where is. No further uh, warranty. So, remember here class, um, vendor makes no warranty as to the quality or workable condition of the goods and that the buyer will take them in the condition in which they are found. Kung ano yung condition niya ngayon and from the place where they are located at kung saan man siya naroon, the buyer will take yung uh, goods in that condition in that location so this will not obviously extend to liens or encumbrances unknown to the vendee and could not be disclosed by physical examination of the goods uh, sold so encumbrances so we will talk about encumbrances uh, later later on what else um sale of second hand articles syempre walang implied warranty as to condition adaptation fitness or suitability for purpose for which it was made Kasi nga second hand na eh, nagamit na ng ibang tao. Hindi na natin alam kung ano talaga ang totoong condition niyan. There is no warranty as to quality of an article sold as and for as second hand article. So, wala talaga. Kasi gamit na nga eh, hindi mo na talaga alam kung paano ginamit. Like kung sasakyan, hindi mo alam. Sobrang um, nalaspag, hindi pinapa-change uh, pinapa oil ng, uh, ng may-ari. So, pagka binili mo yan, Wala talagang uh, warranty yan. Yan din yung as is, where is. So, uh, anyway, di, mahirap kasing magbumili ng mga second hand. Totoo lang. But uh, this is at the risk of the um, buyer. So, anyway, such articles may might be sold under such circumstances as to raise an implied warranty. So, pwede namang mabenta yung mga second hand na magkakaroon sila ng implied warranty. Kailan yan? Pagka sinabi mo na... Um, mag-issue ka ng certificate or ng uh, certification yung uh, vendor that itong uh, itong machine na to, itong sasakyan na to ay uh, chinek tapos na verify that it is in a very good working condition at uh, talagang good as new, etc. So, this is um, um, an express warranty binding on the uh, buyer. So, ay binding on the seller. So, raise an implied warranty pero sa totoo lang naman this, this is uh, express talaga kasi this is provided for by the certification issued by the uh, buyer ay by the seller ano ba yan? so anyway um, also take note that there are no warranties in case of sale by virtue of authority or of authority in fact or in law so um walang warranty of title. So, hindi talaga winawarant ng seller that he is the owner of the goods. So, hindi naman talaga niya sinabi na siya ang owner. So, here, yung uh, implied warranty na siya ang may-ari ng goods or he has the right to transfer it at the time, transfer ownership at the time of delivery does not apply to a sheriff, to the auctioneer because the auctioneer may not be the owner of the goods. Um, mortgagee who is obviously not the owner of the mortgage property the pledgee who is not obviously the uh, owner of the pledged property so yung mortgagor siya, yung, mortgage, yung mortgagor yun yung nagsangla so siya talaga yung owner ng property or it can happen that the, mor the mortgagor is a third person pa but nonetheless ang point dito is yung mortgagee yung tumanggap ng sangla hindi siyang may are so hindi nag apply sa kanya yung uh, kung binenta ito sa itong mortgage property in a foreclosure sale, hindi mag apply yung implied, hindi mag apply yung implied warranty. So they are not liable to a person with a legal or equitable interest in the thing sold because they do not warrant that they have title. Uh, hindi naman nila sinabi na sila ang may title doon sa uh, goods. So 
Uh, what else? Um, ano pa ba? Uh, take note also here we it. Sige na nga, hindi ko na nga muna i-discuss. So anyway, let's uh, continue with subsection 1, the warranty, the implied warranty in case of eviction. So, ano ba yung eviction? In 1548, sabi niya, judicial process. Process daw siya. So, whereby the vendee is deprived of the whole or part of the thing purchased, by virtue of a final judgment based on a right prior to the sale or an act imputable to the vendor. So the act imputable to the vendor may occur even after the sale. So para hindi tayo mahirapan sa konsepto ng eviction, um, siguro nanonood naman kayo ng uh, Pinoy Big Brother. Uh, so remember, every week or so, they will evict one housemate. So, anong ibig sabihin pagka inivik nila yung isang... Okay, maglalang hindi ako nanonood nun, no? Siguro yung mga first season lang nung hindi pa masyadong kung sino-sino na lang ang kinukuha. So, anyway, um, every uh, week, there is one housemate that is evicted from uh, the house. Anong nangyayari pagka evicted siya? Papalayasin siya doon sa house. Uh, same concept as in uh, sale. So, in case of eviction, let us say you buy a parcel of land, uh, sabi mo na may bahay na rin, um, to be evicted from the possession, occupation of the house and lot, uh, papaalisin ka nila doon sa, yun nga, they will, the, the, the possession and occupation will be taken away from the buyer because of a final judgment um, rendered by a court. So, may case ito. Tapos, yung court, sinabi niya na, ay, ikaw buyer, hindi ka entitled dyan. Alis ka dyan. So, yan ang uh, eviction. So, anyway, um, remember, class, na if you are the seller, kailangan, maipromise mo doon sa buyer mo that he will uh, enjoy yung uh, continuous use and possession of the property after buying it from you. Now, kung halimbawa, binig, binenta mo sa kanya yung kotse, tapos may ibang nakakuha sa kanya, dinimanda siya para ma-recover yung kotse. Later on, nanalo yung taong nagdemanda dun sa buyer mo. There, tapos nakuha ng taong yan yung kotse because of the decision of the court. Tapos itong buyer mo, binayaran nga niya sa'yo, tapos wala pa siyang kotse, di ba? Wala na siyang pera, wala pa siyang kotse. Ikaw naman na seller, you obviously violated the warranty against uh, eviction. So anyway, essential elements of the warranty. Number one, vendee is deprived in whole or in part of the thing purchased. So nawala yung uh, object in whole or in part. What else? Uh, he is deprived by virtue of a final judgment. Meaning, there is a case filed by a third person who is claiming the property which the buyer bought from the seller. Natagalugin ko. Mayroong nagkiklaim noong um, property, hindi <laughs> rin Tagalog, no? noong um, property na binili ng buyer mula kay seller. And noong nagclaim ito ng uh, third person, claimant, sabi na lang natin, noong nagclaim ito ng claimant slash third person, Siyempre, ang ginawa niyang paraan is to go to court and then the court um, decided that this claimant is entitled to the property instead of you. And yung decision ng court is a uh, final. Uh, remember class, a decision is final if you do not appeal it to a higher court within the prescribed period. So, let us say, finile mo yung... Kasi ang mga courts may hierarchy yan, no? MTC, Municipal Trial Court. Pwedeng Municipal Trial Court in Cities, uh, Metropolitan Trial Courts, tsaka yung Municipal Circuit Trial Courts, etc. Yun yung mga uh, court of first instance. Sila yung unang uh, court. Yung mga susunod naman na court is yung Regional Trial Court. After that, the Court of Appeals. And after that, the Supreme Court. So, let us say, you file a case with the regional trial court, ikaw yung claimant, you file a case with the RTC. Now, um, pagka halimbawa, um, syempre, ang ididimanda mo bilang claimant 
is yung buyer who is in possession of the property. Now, syempre si buyer, natalo siya. Now, the buyer has a choice whether to elevate the case to the Court of Appeals or not. So, kung gusto niyang elevate sa Court of Appeals, eh, de-elevate tapos or appeal to the Court of Appeals. Tapos, kung halimbawa, natalo naman siya sa Court of Appeals, meron siyang choice to elevate or to appeal it to the Supreme Court. Now, uh, remember class here that uh, appeal is not mandatory. So, kung tanggap na ng buyer yung decision at hindi na siya nag-appeal, tapos nag-prescribe na yung period of appeal, hindi, hindi na, bagay, wala nang time para mag-appeal. Uh, remember class that the decision has become uh, final already. So, final na yung decision because of um, yung hindi pag-appeal ng uh, buyer. So, because the decision has become final, and yun nga, sinabi ko nga, natalo yung buyer, he will be deprived of the property by virtue of a final judgment. What else? Uh, the judgment is based on a uh, right prior to the sale or an act imputable to the vendor. Nung um, binenta ng vendor sa'yo yung lupa, meron na talaga siyang pinagbentahan na nauna. Tapos yung pinagbentahan niya na una is, um, let us say, in good faith. Tapos he already registered the property, etc. <laughs> registered the sale to him. So, ikaw naman, double sale, di ba? So, ikaw naman na buyer number two, you will be evicted because uh, because of a uh, right prior to the sale to you. Siyempre, yung right ni buyer one is prior to your right. So, that is prior to your sale, to the sale to you. So, that is a right base, uh, right prior to the sale or later on an act imputable to the uh, vendor. Let us say, binenta niya sa'yo yung uh, lupa, ikaw yung buyer. Tapos, buyer, wala ka lang ginawa. Nagbayad ka lang basta. Tapos, hindi mo man kinuha yung titulo na dun sa uh, seller. So, itong seller, dahil nasa kanya nga yung titulo, sinangla sa ibang... Um, sinangla sa bangko, tapos yung utang niya hindi nabayaran sa bangko tapos yung bangko, finor close yung uh, lupa wala kang kaalam-alam so nabenta na, nabenta na siya sa uh, public auction tapos one year na hindi na redeem yung property so yung nakabili sa public auction is already the owner tapos ikaw naman na ano, you have lost your right um, doon sa uh, lupa so that is an act imputable to the vendor that happened after the sale uh, to you. So, yun ang um, um, uh, act imputable to the vendor. Also, take note that in the case for eviction, the vendor was summoned at the instance of the vendee. So, claimant, syempre, ididemanda niya yung uh, buyer na naka-occupy dun sa property or naka-possess dun sa property. Tapos, ikaw naman na buyer, syempre, sino ba naman ang pwedeng magtanggol ng right mo? doon sa property kung hindi yung seller. So, ang gagawin mo is you must uh, request or pray to the court na isama siya doon sa uh, demanda as a co-defendant. Or pwede ka rin namang mag-file ng tinatawag nilang third-party claim. Uh, demanda mo yung, um, uh, yung seller uh, based on his uh, warranties. So, in short, basta kailangan mo lang siyang isama doon sa uh, case uh, para lamang uh, maipagtanggol niya yung uh, right niya na ibinigay niya sa sayo bilang isang buyer. So, vendor must be summoned in the suit for eviction. So, anyway, there is no waiver on the part of the vendee. The vendee did not waive the warranty against eviction. And um, also take note here that warranty against eviction refers to trespass in law meaning ng trespass in law, um, it will require that the person or the claimant will go to court and uh, claim the thing sold or part thereof and invoke reasons therefore. So, final judgment is rendered by the court and the buyer is deprived of the thing sold or any part thereof. So, dun lamang i-apply yung um, uh, eviction. Dun pa lang masasabi na evicted by final judgment. Now, kung halimbawa, pumunta doon, tinakot pumunta sa property na binili mo tinakot ka, may dala siyang barel tapos uh, napaalis ka hindi yun ang tinutukoy na eviction ng, uh, uh, ng law kailangan is trespass in law meaning the court deprives you of the property not some unlawful uh, element so 
you file your own action para ma, ma recover mo yung land kung ikaw yung buyer pinalayas ka by uh, force etc um what else Vendi does not need to appeal the uh, action. Katulad nga ng sinabi ko sa inyo, uh, if the lower court evicts the buyer, he does not need to appeal to the appellate court. But uh, before, he can sue for damages or he can sue doon sa warrant niya. But uh, what is required before the seller will be liable uh, on his warranty against eviction is that the decision must be final. Take note also of the term uh, prescription in uh, 1550 we talk about prescription also in obligations and contract we have contracts we have talked about uh, prescription so in prescription remember one will acquire ownership or other real rights through the lapse of time in the manner and under the conditions prescribed by law in the same way rights are lost by prescription now if you acquire rights because of prescription because of the lapse of time the karong karang right it is called acquisitive prescription if you lose rights because of the lapse of time, it is called um, extinctive uh, prescription. Now, in 1550, uh, remember, there is adverse possession. Um, yung adverse possession, siyempre, is by a third uh, person. So, ikaw yung buyer, somebody adversely um, occupies yung uh, land. So, anyway, uh, these are the effects of uh, prescription. So, if the pres ano, if the prescription is if the period for prescription is completed before the sale, remember the vendee may lose the thing purchased to a third person who has acquired title by um, prescription. So usually, a uh, prescription in bad faith. Uh, halimbawa, um, ako hindi ko lupa yung lupa na to. Tapos, the property is untitled. Wala siyang titulo. So, merong isang, meron isang nagkiklaim. Siya daw ang nakapwesto dyan. So, binakuran na niya, etc. Pero, iniwan niya yung uh, property. Siya talaga yung nagkiklaim. Siya na talaga yung nakapwesto since the start. The property is untitled. Pero, ako, dumating ako, nakita ko na wala siya. Inabandonan niya ng ilang ilang taon. So, pumwesto ako. Tapos, um, uh, usually for, alam ko na may iba talagang may-ari. So, the prescription that is required here is 30 years para mapasa akin yung uh, lupa. 30 years if in bad faith, 10 years if in good faith. So, anyway, 30 years. Um, kung nakompleto ko yung 30 years, edi sa akin na yung lupa by um, acquisitive prescription nagkaroon ako ng lupa just by staying there for 30 years in bad faith. So anyway, um, itong seller, yung talagang original na may-ari ng lupa, sells it to a buyer. So obviously, the buyer can lose the thing purchased uh, to me because I have acquired title thereto by prescription of a uh, 30 years. So, remember here, class, that the prescription has uh, started to run against the vendor. So, nung time pa lang na uh, well, hindi pa nabibenta ng vendor, tapos nag-occupy na ako, against him, tumatakbo na yung uh, 30 years. And it was completed before the sale to the buyer. So, here, syempre, obviously, I can deprive the buyer of the property. And um, the buyer... Siyempre, sinong hahabulin niya? Yung seller niya. Uh, kasi nung time na binenta sa akin ni seller, actually, hindi na talaga sa kanya yung uh, property. But I acquired it by uh, acquisitive prescription. So, Vendi can enforce the warranty against eviction against the seller. And uh, this in this case, the deprivation is based on a right prior to the sale. And also, this is an act imputable to the vendor. Kasalanan din niya. So, what else? Um, what if the uh, prescription, period of prescription is completed after the sale? So, same scenario, same problem. Uh, there is a land originally owned by this person. And then, I occupied it when he abandoned it for a little while. So, anyway... Uh, in the meantime na naka-occupy ako dun sa land, itong si seller sells it to the buyer. 
yung buyer nakita ko doon, pinabayaan lang ako, hindi naman ako pinaalis. Tapos, um, natapos yung uh, 30 years na acquisitive prescription period in bad faith. So, uh, remember here class that um, the vendor is not liable for eviction. So, nung natapos yung um, prescriptive period, it is after the sale. And the buyer, it is against the buyer na. The buyer already owns the property. It, the buyer was already, the property was already sold to the buyer. So, wala nang liability ang vendor dito. Because remember, the buyer could have easily interrupted the running of the 30-year period by a uh, filing an action against me para palayasin ako dun sa property pero hindi niya ginawa negligence na ng buyer yan so remember class uh, here the seller is not liable for eviction but take note class take take note dahil alam ko may pumapasok na sa mga isip ma'am kami po naka-occupy kami dito sa property namin ng 100 years na kami dito yung mula na ninuno ng ninuno ko etc etc sa amin na itong lupa na to maghunos dili kayo class remember that the rule on acquisitive prescription will apply only if the land is not titled wala pang titulo so pagka may titulo na yung lupa it is placed into the torrents system of registration so kung may torrents title na yun yung titulo yung mga nakikita yung kulay kulay i think kulay blue na siya ngayon eh um cream tapos may blue na border na ganun so um Kung may titulo yung lupa, kahit na 1 million years pa kayong naka-occupy dyan, it will not ripen into ownership. Huwag kayong ma-feeling ha, squatter pa rin kayo. Kahit na uh, 100 years na kayong uh, naka-occupy dyan. So, 1 million years, sige, kahit 1 million. Basta merong titulo na yung lupa, the owner is entitled. Kahit pabayaan pa niya yan ng kahit, kahit gano'ng katagal. So, yun ang... Uh, prescription for you under 1550 uh, in case of non-payment of taxes under 1551 what is the effect if the vendee is deprived of the ownership of the property because it is sold at public auction because of um, non-payment of taxes due to due from the vendor vendor nung binenta niya sa yung lupa di pala nagbabayad ng tax so and ikaw naman na buyer you were evicted from the property because of uh, non-payment of taxes, the property is sold at public auction. Seller is liable for eviction. Again, this is an act imputable to the seller. But uh, obviously here, at the time of the sale, para maging liable ang uh, vendor for uh, non-payment, uh, for the vendor for uh, eviction, non-payment of taxes was not known to the vendee. So the buyer should not be aware Hindi ko naman alam na marami pala siyang utang na taxes. So, dapat hindi aware yung buyer for the buyer to avail of the warranty against eviction. So, syempre kung alam ng buyer yan na hindi nakakabayad ng tax dun sa real property tax yung um, seller dun sa lupa, eh di bayaran niya. Alam nga namang di niya bayaran, eh siya na ang may-ari. So, anyway... Uh, yun ang 1551 in 1552 uh, this talks about um, yung mga execution uh, sales so uh, creditor, dinimanda niya yung debtor, tapos dahil may utang nga sa kanya the creditor wins, tapos merong uh, during the case, inattach yung properties ng uh, debtor meaning ni reserve yung properties ng debtor for a uh, some judgment later on, eh, natalo nga yung debtor, napatunayan na may utang siya. So, yung mga property attached ay ibebent, will be executed upon. So, dun i-execute yung decision. Magbayad kayo ng ganitong halaga. So, kung hindi mabayaran ng debtor yan, kukunin yung mga properties niya. Tapos, ibebenta at public auction, in which we call now your execution uh, sale. So, remember here, class, um, in a judicial sale, yung makakabili sa public auction, he is entitled to recover the purchase money from the officer if the funds are still, from the sheriff, if the funds are still in the hands of the sheriff or from the judgment uh, debtor. So, um, uh, 
purchase money. So, kung halimbawa, nabili mo tapos bigla uh, mayroong eviction. So, mayroong eviction. So, remember here, class the purchaser in good faith uh, can recover his money from the sheriff kung uh, nasa sheriff pa. Or, syempre, he can recover yung kanyang money from the judgment debtor. Remember, binili ng buyer to dun sa public auction. Tapos, bigla, he is evicted from this property. So, recover niya na yung binayad niya from the sheriff if the funds are still in his hands or from the judgment uh, debtor. So, remember here, class, na walang implied warranty kasi ang mga sheriff na um, wala silang implied warranties because they are selling by authority of law. They do not represent themselves to be the owner of the uh, goods. So, the judgment debtor is responsible for eviction and also hidden defects, etc. Uh, unless otherwise it is decreed in the judgment. What else? Um, uh, what else? Um, 1553 talks about... Um, ay, tipa pa, pa pala dito. Oh, anyway, uh, sinabi ko na pala yan. 1553 talks about uh, effect of stipulation waiving warranty. So, here, the warranty against eviction is uh, waived. So, 1553 53 talks about the effect of the seller's bad faith. So, remember here, the seller's bad faith will consist in knowing beforehand at the time of the sale of the presence of the fact giving rise to eviction. So, meron siyang idea na pwedeng ma-evict yung uh, buyer. If, uh, if the seller, after selling his property to another, sold the same uh, to another to purchase, he cannot even buy stipulation be exempt from liability and such stipulation is uh, void so here um remember class this is a uh, bad faith on the part of the seller alam niyang may possibility like in a double sale so yung second buyer bago ibinenta ng uh, seller do sa second buyer he already knows that there is a chance that the second buyer will be evicted from uh, the property so remember here class that um uh, the effect here is that uh, he cannot be exempt from liability kahit na may waiver ang buyer. I waive ko na tong right ko against ganito ganyan. And such stipulation, remember, is uh, void. So, if somehow the buyer um, waives yung warranty against eviction and there is bad faith on the part of the seller, alam naman talaga niya na mapapalayas yung buyer dun sa uh, possession and enjoyment use occupation of the property, the stipulation or the waiver is a void. Seller is still subject to liability against uh, eviction. What about if it is the buyer who is in bad faith? So the buyer knew of the defect of the title at the time of sale. He cannot uh, claim that the vendor has warranted his legal and hindi niya pwedeng i-claim na ginaranti ng a vendor na magkakaroon siya ng continuous legal and peaceful possession of the property uh, sold. So here, noong uh, binili ng buyer yung property, he is already assuming yung risk ng eviction and he is not entitled to warranty against eviction and he cannot also recover damages. Take note also of the uh, kinds of waiver against eviction. It may be consciente or it may be intentionada. In consciente, remember, waiver is voluntarily made by the vendi. In in ano naman intentionada is uh, also uh, voluntarily made by the vendi. But here, remember, in consciente, there is no knowledge and assumption uh, without the knowledge and assumption of the risk of eviction. He is not aware, the buyer that there is a possibility of eviction when he made the waiver. Now, in case of intentionada, remember, this is again made by the waiver, um, made by the waiver, made by the buyer, this is a waiver made by the buyer voluntarily, but this time with the knowledge of the risk of eviction, and he will assume the consequences. So, in short, he will take the risk of uh, eviction. So, here, in 1554, it discusses the effect of waiver by the buyer. So, again, di ba kanina, diniscuss na natin in part. So, uh, this is, again, um, um, 
qualification of uh, what we have discussed. So anyway, if the waiver is only conscious, vendor shall pay only for the value which the thing sold had at the time of eviction. So kung magkano lang yung thing at the time of eviction, because uh, may waiver naman kasi eh. So we need talaga ng um, buyer yung kanyang uh, warranty against eviction. But the vendor will pay only the value of the thing sold at the time of eviction. Now, in the second kind of waiver, remember, the vendor is exempt from obligation to answer for eviction, um, provided also that the seller did not act in bad faith. Uh, because in waiver intentionada, there is bad faith on the part of the buyer. Alam niya naman na merong risk na maibig siya, but he assumes the risk, so the vendor is exempted from the obligation to answer for uh, eviction. So take note here, class in 1554, every waiver is presumed to be uh, consciente if the contrary is not proven. So to consider a waiver intentionada, it is necessary that besides the act of waiver, uh, it is accompanied by some other circumstances which will reveal the buyer's knowledge of the risk of eviction and e his intention to assume the risks of eviction. So, presumption is consciente um, unless the contrary, if the contrary is not proven, to make it intentionada, not only must there be a waiver, it should be accompanied by other circumstances which will indicate knowledge of the assumption of risk. So, you will notice class under 1553 and also 1554, uh, yung general waiver ng warranty as in uh, yung consciente which is yun nga yun nga general waiver uh, does not create the effect of a waiver talaga so what it does is to merely limit the liability of the seller to the value of the thing sold at the time of eviction so in short ang mga consciente waivers will uh, still leave yung uh, liability on the part of the seller but uh, remember, class, that the seller here is liable only to the value of the things sold at the time of eviction. So anyway, uh, let us also talk about yung um, rights and liabilities of a seller in case of eviction. So remember, a uh, seller must pay for, in 1555, the value of the thing. So yung value of the thing is, remember, re really more or less than the value at the time of sale. So it may be more because of improvements, it may be less because of deterioration. So vendor should pay for the excess and not suffer the damages. What else? Um, income or fruits of the thing. If uh, in case of eviction, the buyer is ordered to deliver the income or fruits to the winner or the claimant or the third person, who filed a case against him, yung nagdemanda sa buyer, and yung uh, court, sabi niya, dun sa buyer, buyer, balik mo rin yung fruits and interest dun sa winner, remember, um, the buyer will be entitled to recover from the seller yung uh, income or fruits of the thing na binigay niya dun sa claimant or winner, third person. So, remember, class, um, this is fair, sabi nga dito, because the seller was using the price money without uh, interest. What else? Um, also, cost of a uh, suit. Uh, remember, the vendee is also allowed to recover expenses of litigation resulting in the eviction, including the cost of the action uh, brought against the vendor to enforce the warranty. So, cost of suit mentioned does not include, siyempre, traveling and other incidental expenses. Diyos ko naman, gusto nyo na lang, lahat pinabayad sa seller, abusado naman. So, incurred by the vendee while defending himself in the action. And also, remember that he is not entitled to recover damages if the sale, if the sale was made by the seller in good faith. So, kung bad faith lang, that is the only time that the uh, seller is liable for damages. So, Expenses of litigation, binayad niya, including attorney's fees, uh, cost of suit, etc. So, yan ang mga kasama sa um, 
i-recover ng buyer from the seller because he was forced to spend money to defend his uh, right. So, ayan, kailangan bayaran ng seller lahat yan. Because if not for uh, the seller, kung hindi, kung uh, not for the uh, warranty given by the seller here, edi sana, hindi niya binili yung lupa, hindi nangyari sa kanya to, etc., etc. Also, take note, expenses of the contract, if these are paid by the uh, buyer, um, remember class that the buyer can recover these uh, expenses from the uh, seller. So, if the uh, expenses for the execution and registration of the sale are borne by the vendor, kasi di ba general rule naman is that the vendor in the absence of any agreement. But if it is agreed upon by the parties that the buyer should pay for such expenses, syempre buyer can recover them from the seller. Also, uh, recoverable against the seller are damages and interest. So, is qualified but by the condition that the sale was made by the seller in bad faith. But of course, katulad nga ng sinabi ko noon, good faith is always uh, always presumed. Uh, when the buyer will not be entitled to recover damages and unless bad faith is uh, shown by the uh, buyer on the part of the vendor uh, in making the sale. How about if there is a partial eviction under 1556? So remember, yung uh, buyer has alternative uh, rights in case of partial eviction. The buyer can uh, rescind the contract or the buyer can enforce the warranty. Now, when is there partial eviction? Remember, there is partial eviction if the vendee is deprived of the part of a part of the thing sold and yung part in uh, wherein the vendee has been deprived of um, is so important na hindi niya bibili yung um, <clears throat> buong property without the said part. So, itong part na to talagang very important ito. Na ito yung uh, dahilan kung bakit binili ng buyer yung kabuuan. Pero, <clears throat> malas pa, dun pa siya na-evict dito sa portion na ito. So, remember class that is partial uh, eviction. Now, also there is partial eviction if there are two or more things. Um, whether these two or more things are uh, jointly sold, uh, whether these two or more things are sold for a lump sum or for a separate price for each. Halimbawa, isang ganito, uh, 1,000 pesos. Or for a lump sum na itong tatlong ito or itong dalawang ito, lahat na sila, uh, uh, 100,000 pesos. Ganyan. So, yun ay uh, lump sum. For a separate price for each, so bawat isa ay... Uh, 10,000, ganyan. So, anyway, and the vendi here would not have purchased one without the other. So, here, um, class, hindi bibilin ng uh, buyer yung uh, property kung wala yung mga, uh, yung lahat ng mga uh, bagay na nandyan. So, if uh, buyer would not have purchased one of them, without the other. Kumbaga, hindi niya bibilin tong isang ito kung hindi kasama yung iba. Uh, remember here, class, that if one of them, if one of the objects uh, were uh, lost or due to eviction, ay nawala. So, napa, if the, the seller is evicted, there is a partial eviction. So, here, remember, di bibilin ng buyer itong isang to kung hindi kasama yung iba. So, yun ang uh, partial eviction also. Uh, contemplated by 1556. Now, uh, again, as I have said, the alternative rights of the vendi in case of partial eviction is are rescission and also enforcement of uh, warranty. So, take note here um, that the remedy of rescission is not available in case of total eviction. Kasi pagka rescission, obviously, the buyer needs to return yung uh, object uh, noong uh, contract. Kasi nga, rescission implies mutual restitution. This is not a new concept. Pinag-aralan na natin yan when we studied uh, rescissible contracts. So, bago ka makapag ng contract, you have to return also. Now, if there is total eviction, the buyer can cannot return anything because yung property that he is supposed to return is already in the hands of the claimant or the third person or the winner in the action for eviction. Now, um, obviously, 
in case of a partial eviction, the buyer can return yung portion na natitira. Rescission can still be allowed with respect to uh, the subject matter which uh, remains. So, with respect to the portion which remains, rescission is allowed because the buyer is uh, able to return or uh, restore you own portion which uh, remains. But obviously, the buyer can return the thing, but it must not be subject to other encumbrances than those which it, it had when he had acquired it. So anyway, take note also of 1557, which I already discussed. Judgment becomes final if on appeal, the decision decreeing eviction is affirmed or uh, within the period within which to appeal, no appeal was uh, made. So again, in 1549, it is not necessary that the buyer appeals from the decision of the lower court. What is necessary is that the judgment of eviction becomes final so that the warranty against the seller can be enforced. Um, in 1558, so again, the vendor or the seller must be summoned to the case for uh, eviction. So remember, vendor to be made party in suit for eviction um, uh, phrase unless he is summoned in the suit for eviction means at that that at the instance of the vendi ibig sabihin vendi will uh, pray to the court will request to the court that the vendor should be made a party to the action for eviction um, by being a co-defendant or by the filing of a third party complaint against the vendor so it is the buyer who will file a third party complaint against the um uh, seller. What else? Um, notification must be given uh, to the seller. But uh, remember also that the seller must uh, come into the action for um, eviction. Bakit kaya kailangang pag-participate ang uh, seller? Because obviously, yun lamang uh, seller ang makakapag-defend ng um, right ng buyer to the peaceful and legal possession of the property. Siya, man, siya naman talaga kasi ang nakakaalam kung ano ang nangyari. So, he must appear, he must be summoned at the instance of the uh, buyer. So, the object of the law here is to give the vendor an opportunity to intervene, makialam, and to defend the title na transfer niya doon sa buyer. Kasi nga, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, siya lang naman talagang nakakalam kung ano talagang nangyari, and he is in the best position to defend the validity of his uh, title. If there is no opportunity given to the, buyer, to the seller to defend his title, which he has given to the buyer, he is not bound by his uh, warranty. So, yun ang uh, 1558. Uh, 1559, again, uh, vendor is to be made a co-defendant. Ulit-ulit na lang yan. Um, should a uh, buyer should um, call in the vendor to defend the action which has been instituted uh, against him. So, uh, ask the court within the time allowed for him to answer and uh, so that the vendor will be made as a co-defendant. So, dalawa na silang um, mag answer dun sa uh, third person claimant. So, take note also of uh, 1560 which talks about servitudes or easement. Ano muna yung servitude or easement? An encumbrance. So, this is a burden upon a property uh, for the benefit of another immovable belonging to a different owner. So, an example of an apparent servitude, an apparent servitude is nakikita may mga signs, right of way, establishing a permanent passage which is continually kept in view by external sign. An uh, example of a non-apparent easement is a party wall um, which has no uh, exterior sign. So, anyway, yung um, uh, apparent servitude is yung obvious na uh, burden siya sa immovable property. So, kung halimbawa, yung mga yung lupa na kinakatayuan ng bahay nyo is nasa looban. Tapos, ang daan, ang wala kayong access sa highway. Yan. So, nasa looban kayo, tapos ito yung highway, nandito kayo banda sa likod, wala kayong access sa highway. Tapos, sa gilid, 
let us say, yung dalawang gilid ng uh, property ninyo is merong bangin. So, hindi talaga kayo dagat dito, bangin dito, o dagat sa magkabila. So, anyway, bahala na kung anong imagination nyo dyan. But, uh, you cannot access the road. So, you cannot um, uh, go to other places. So, anong gagawin nyo? So, yung property sa harap, uh, magkakaroon ka ng ismet doon. So, that is the right of uh, way. Right of way is an ismet or a servitude. So, yung property na nasa record will be called your master uh, estate. So, it's siya yung... Um, pinagsisilbihan ng isang servant estate. So, yung servant estate, nasa kanya yung burden. So, yung right of way, nandun sa servant estate, tapos nasa kanya yung burden, tapos dun dumadaan yung mga tao. So, yung uh, servant estate will serve yung master estate. So, yun ang uh, isang uh, ismet or servitude. Para makapunta ng highway, yung mga nakatira sa master estate will cross dun sa right of way that, i that burdens uh, yung uh, servant estate so that they can go to the highway, so that they can go to other places. So, kung may sign yan or it is uh, visible, remember this is uh, um, apparent uh, servitude. Now, kung halimbawa, same road, same right of way, pero let us say, matagal nang walang nakatira sa likod, tapos yung uh, dinadaanan is nagkaroon na ng mga um, damo-damo, weeds, ganyan. So, hindi na halata na may daan. So, this is um, obviously uh, non-apparent na siya because uh, it is not continually kept in view. Uh, hindi na rin siya obvious. So, non-apparent uh, ismet na ang tawag dyan. So, here in uh, 1560, nakabili ang buyer ng isang uh, property with uh, an ismet. Yan. So, here, the easement which covers the property, ang nabili niya yung servant estate. Tapos, nung nabili niya yung servant estate, there is a non-apparent burden. So, hindi niya nakita na mayroon palang easement. So, the remedy here of the buyer, may right of way pala, hindi niya napansin. So, kasi nga, non-apparent. So, the remedy of the buyer is rescission or the buyer can also ask for uh, damages. So, Remember here that the buyer is not actually uh, deprived of the property uh, that he bought, uh, except na um, except na sa kanya sa kanya naman yung property. Kung baga di naman siya na deprived fully, di naman siya na deprived partially. But uh, remember here, class that the vendee can also ask for rescission of the contract or ask for damages because. Um, Ay, uh, itong mga non-apparent burdens or servitudes, and uh, this is not obviously mentioned in the agreement, eh, kung alam lamang ng buyer ito, hindi niya sana bibilhin yung uh, lupa had he been aware of this non-apparent servitude. So, here, class, um, the contract can be invalidated or can be rescinded on the ground of... Um, mistake. So, dapat siguro ang tambang term na ginamit ng law dito is um, uh, annulled. So, because the ground here is actually a uh, mistake. Pero, madami namang mistake na ganyan ang ating uh, law wherein it used the term rescission instead of uh, annulment. So, anyway, um, hindi niya bibilin kung alam lang niya na merong burden or easement or servitude itong lupa na ito. But uh, obviously, the remedies here are not available if the burden or servitude is obvious, um, made known, continually kept in view by external signs, and uh, the signs reveal the use and enjoyment of the same. Right of way, nakalagay pa. Ano, ano nga, hindi, nyo, hindi mo pa alam yan. Ikaw bumibili, dapat makikita mo yan. Naka, may karatula pa. Right of way, nakalagay. Tapos, um, um, or nakalagay sa title that there is a right of way. So, nakalagay sa title ng property na binibili mo that there is a right of way. So, obviously, it is not, an, it is apparent. What else? Um, uh, if non-apparent, if the non-apparent burden or servitude is registered. So, the registration of um, burdens or servitudes or easements um, dun sa, ay ginagawa sa registry of deeds. So, if it is registered sa registry of deeds, it operates as a constructive notice to the uh, buyer. So, nakalagay naman sa um, titulo na mayroong um, uh, nakarehistro doon sa titulo na mayroon siyang uh, 
easement or servitude even if it is not apparent di mo nakikita but dahil nakalagay nga siya sa titulo katulad ng sinabi ko kanina remember class that uh, this is uh, the remedies are not available dahil sa mere perusal of the title you can see the registered right of uh, way what else um, obviously if the uh, burden or the servitude is known to the buyer there is no warranty. Eh dahil nga na registro, there is a constructive uh, notice. So parang pinaalam na sa buyer even if hindi naman talaga. But this constructive notice operates as knowledge of the vendee which will um, uh, equate to no warranty. What else if the vendee had knowledge of the encumbrance whether it is registered or not? So actual knowledge also. Alam naman talaga niya na daanan eh whether registered or not. Remember that the uh, remedies are not available to the buyer. So, action must be uh, brought within one year from the execution of the deed of sale of the immovable property. If the period has already lapsed, uh, the buyer siyempre, may bring, still bring an action for damages within one year from the date of discovery of the non-apparent burden or servitude. So, dapat ma-discover mo siya within... Um, one year from the date of the deed of sale uh, so that you can avail of rescission. Now, if you do not discover it with a, uh, within the one year period from the date of sale, remember here, class, na um, you can avail of the remedy only of damages, which you can file one year after uh, discovery. Uh, so, let's proceed to subsection 2, yung warranty against hidden defects of or encumbrance upon the thing uh, sold. So anyway, itong warranty against hidden defects, uh, please take note of yung redhibitory action or yung action redhibitoria. So this is defined in, uh, provided for in uh, Article 1561. So this is an action uh, filed to avoid a sale on account of some vice or defect in the thing sold which renders it its use impossible or inconvenient and imperfect that uh, it must be uh, assumed that the buyer would not have purchased it had he known of the vice or defect. So, the object is the rescission of the contract. So, ang mga action redhibitoria, this is for rescission of a contract based on um, defect or vice. If the object is to procure the return of a part of the purchase price or discount, yan, the remedy is known as your action quanti minoris or action quanti estimatoris, which I have already mentioned in our previous uh, lessons. Now, take note also of yung redhibitory vice or defect. Defect in the article sold against which the defect, which against which defect the seller is bound to warrant. So, the vice or defect must constitute an imperfection, a defect in the nature of very of a certain importance. And uh, remember here, kung minor defects lang, it will not give um, rise to redhibition. So, also take note that uh, the mere absence of a certain quality, meron ka lang hinahanap na quality sa uh, object na binili mo, hindi siya present. Um, uh, tapos akala ng buyer meron siya itong quality na to uh, remember this is not necessarily a uh, redhibitory defect so yung uh, yung lack of certain qualities uh, remember is not necessarily does not necessarily mean that a thing positively suffers from certain defects so anyway the requisites for warranty against hidden defects. So, pagka-seller ka, siguro doon mo maayos yung binibenta mo. ba? Kanina yung warranty. Warranty that you have title or you have the right to transfer ownership at the time of delivery. Warranty against eviction. Ito na yung warranty against hidden uh, defects. So, the requisites are, number one, the defect is important or serious. Uh, so, the defect is important if it renders the thing sold unfit for use for which is it was intended. Hindi ko magamit ito kung uh, papano ko siya gustong gamitin. What else? It diminishes its fitness for such use to such extent that the vendee would not have um, bought it 
had he been aware of the defect or babaratin niya sana kung alam lang niya na may defect yung um, hindi na niya magamit ng maayos para dun sa purpose niya and kung alam lang niya na hindi niya magagamit ng maayos yan para sa purpose niya he would have uh, not bought it at all hindi na lang sana niya binili or would have given a lower price for it what else uh, the defect must be hidden or latent um, the defect must exist at the time the sale was made what else? Um, the vendee must give notice of defect to the vendor within a reasonable time. Um, ano pa ba? And number five, the action for rescission or reduction of the price but be, must be brought within the statute of limitations. Number six, no waiver of warranty on the part of the uh, vendee. So take note of the word uh, hidden or latent so the defect is hidden or latent if it was not known or could not have been known to the uh, vendee so this is hidden to the eyes and cannot be discovered by ordinary ordinary careful inspection or examination cannot be discovered ordinarily by careful inspection or examination so obviously walang warranty against hidden defect if the defect is not hidden or if it is patent or um Ano ba yung isa pang ginamit na term ng uh, law patent or visible? Yan. So, um, uh, also take note that if the defect is uh, hidden but the buyer is an expert who by uh, reason of his trade or profession should have known yung defect even if it is hidden, uh, hindi siya considered as a uh, warrant. Ano? Hindi, hindi magiging liable yung seller for warranty against hidden defects. Kasi, buyer ka, expert ka, dahil sa trade or profession mo, you should have known kung ito ay may uh, defective or uh, hindi, even if ito ay hidden because of your uh, expertise. So, remember here, class, that the same defect may be hidden with respect to one person, but not hidden with respect to another uh, person. Now, what are the rules if the defect is actually patent? Now, remember, if the defect is patent or made known, patent, ah, nakita mo na, or made known, pinalam sa'yo. So, a warranty in general terms does not cover defects which are patent or made known. Sinabi naman sa'yo, nakita mo naman. So, walang ah, warranty against hidden defect because the defects are not hidden. What else? Um... The, the rule is also applicable. Uh, ibig sabihin walang warranty if the defect is not obvious but the seller tells the buyer. So, this is made known to the buyer. Or again, the buyer knows of this defect or should have known of this defect by reason of his uh, expertise. So, what else? Um, take note also that uh, as a general rule, there is no no implied uh, warranty against hidden defects in the sale of second-hand uh, goods. So, as an exception to this, the seller will be liable if he has been shown to have made misrepresentation or acted in bad faith, such as in certifying the condition of the second-hand item. Later on, meron din naman palang defect. So, the buyer here acted in bad faith or uh, made a misrepresentation in which case again papasok na naman yung warranty against hidden defect even if the goods are second hand what else um seller may bind himself against patent or obvious defects so nakita na ng buyer kitang kita naman yung um defects by a casual inspection but here the seller binds himself to uh, warrant even ag uh, against pat patent or obvious uh, defects. So, um, but yung warranty niya, not only uh, against hidden defects, but also against patent or obvious defects. So, pwedeng gawin ng seller yan. Masyado mabait yung seller na ito. Now, uh, take note also, uh, yung implied warranty of, implied warranties of quality, so, quality of goods. So, take note of the term quality of goods, which uh, this will include yung kanilang state or condition. So, 
uh, kailangan meron tayong warranty sa quality warranty sa quality so because um, it will promote higher uh, business standards and discourage uh, yung mga dishonest dealings ng mga um, ng mga seller so syempre alam nyo na honesty is the best policy uh, yung mga seller gusto natin silang maging honest <laughs> as if <laughs> so anyway um, um, para nga naman uh, sigurado tayo na quality yung binibigay, binibili natin so kailangan ang seller would warrant uh, yung quality ng uh, goods so anyway implied warranties of quality includes implied warranty of fitness so the general rule here is that there is no implied quality as to there is no implied warranty as to quality or fitness for any particular purpose under a contract of sale so in short sa totoo lang wala naman talaga tayong implied warranty ng quality at fit, fitness for a particular purpose so particular purpose take note of the term so um, para sa particular purpose ng buyer na ito hindi natin winawarat yung binili niya sa atin is um, of the quality or fitness para dun sa purpose niya. Although, obviously, we will warrant that uh, it is fit for general use, which is yung warranty uh, uh, of merchantability, which we will discuss later on. Now, obviously, this general rule has exceptions. Uh, in 1562, the buyer expressly or by implication manifest to the seller the particular purpose for which the goods are required. So, sinabi ng um, buyer, gagamitin ko ito para sa ganitong purpose. Tapos, tinanong ng buyer ang seller, pwede bang magamit ito para sa particular purpose ko? And uh, obviously, um, um, if the buyer relies on the um, representation of the seller that this is a uh, fit for the particular purpose uh, wherein the buyer will use it, remember that there is a warranty, uh, implied warranty of fitness. So, take note that the buyer will rely upon the seller's skills or judgment. There is implied warranty that the goods are reasonably fit for a particular purpose. So, um, kailangan, pagka sinabi na ng buyer na gagamitin ko ito para sa ganito, tapos sinabi ng seller na, ah, pwede yan para sa purpose mo. Particular yung purpose mo, ha? So, here, remember, if the buyer uh, justifiably relied upon the seller's judgment that the goods uh, he bought would fit yung kanyang particular purpose, um, the buyer is um, the member class uh, has a right to avail of the implied warranty of fitness. Yan. So, anyway, how about the implied warranty of merchantability? So, remember, uh, merchantability is not a warranty of quality. So, it does not require a particular grade or uh, quality. So, but it will require identity between what is described um, in the contract and uh, what is given to the buyer. So, pagka sinabi mong merchantability, uh, yung goods are saleable or standard or average quality. So, the rules regarding merchantability happens when the goods are uh, may apply if the goods are bought by description. The seller war uh, implied the warrants that the goods are of merchantable or saleable quality. So, what else? The requirement uh, of merchantable quality carries within no implication that the goods shall be saleable in a particular market. Particular kasi. Pero obviously, the goods are uh, saleable at a general uh, market. So, yun ang winawarant uh, nila. So it must be made clear that the warrant that the warranty that the goods are of merchantable quality applies to all goods bought from the seller who deals in that goods 
who deals in goods in that description, whether are so they are sold under a patent or trade name or otherwise. So fit for a general purpose yung um, warranty of merchantability. So uh, pagka warranty of merchantability, goods are reasonably fit for the ge general purpose for which they are sold. Sold kung warranty of fitness naman, uh, the goods are suitable for the special purpose of the buyer. So uh, maybe yung special purpose ng buyer will not be satisfied by mere fitness for general purpose. So anyway, class, uh, take note that uh, goods are uh, may become unmerchantable if uh, there is a defect in their, not, not necessarily a defect in their physical condition, but um, because of some other circumstances. So, halimbawa, mayroong infringement of trademark or other um, uh, copyright uh, trade name, ganyan. So, uh, unsaleable itong mga goods na ito. So, halimbawa, mga pirated uh, goods, uh, actually, hindi dapat binibenta yan eh. Kasi any, um, any contract involving pirated uh, merchandise are void uh, contracts. So, yung mga goods na yan are unmerchantable actually. So, not uh, because of a defect in their physical characteristics but because of some other circumstances like uh, infringement of trademark so, or copyright. Yan, syempre. Kung halimbawa, yung sapatos mo, uh, ginaya mo yung tatak na um, Adidas, ganyan. So, infringement of trademark or trade name. So, what else? Um, there can be unmerchantability in case of other uh, goods than food. Um, other goods except food um, because the use of them is dangerous or injurious in ways not to be expected from the goods of uh, that, that kind. So, siguro example is um, uh, bumili ka ng um, Ano ba yan? Huwag na lang pala yung example na yun. Totoo pa lang nangyari sa totoong buhay yun. Uh, bumili ka ng uh, makeup na lang. Hindi ako makaisip eh. So, tapos yung makeup, meron siyang ingredient na allergic ka pala. So, um, causes irritation of the skin. So, it, the product will become uh, not merchantable. But, so, it's not fit for general usage kasi nga nakakakos siya ng uh, allergy. But, uh, Obviously, itong mga example na to medyo um, alanganin siya dahil syempre um, pwedeng allergic ka, yung iba hindi naman allergic. Lalo na na kung Pinoy, may, may allergy ba yung mga Pinoy? Diyos ko, balat kalabaw eh. So anyway, um, take note of um, uh, those uh, rules regarding uh, sale uh, under a patent or trade name. So remember here class, um, if the buyer buys exercising his own judgment instead of relying upon the seller tapos nagbigay siya ng um, trade name or uh, patent or trademark nung kanyang uh, hinahanap na um, goods. So, yung description, dinescribe niya tapos buyer's choice. So, remember here that it precludes yung warranty of uh, fitness. So, walang warranty of fitness here because the buyer relied on his own judgment instead of relying upon the judgment of the seller. Nung bumili siya, meron siyang particular brand in mind. Also, um, take note of um, uh, 1563 uh, exception in case of a stipulation to the contrary. So, uh, remember, meron pa implied warranty of uh, fitness for a particular purpose. So, if the buyer relies on the seller's judgment rather than the patent or trade uh, name. So, meron siyang binigay na patent or trade name, pero still the buyer relied on the uh, seller's judgment rather than yung patent or trade uh, name. So, may binigay sa kanyang branded na item, pero nag-rely pa rin siya sa uh, representation or judgment ng seller. Meron pa rin uh, warranty uh, of uh, fitness. So, what else? Uh, provision does not preclude an implied warranty of merchantability or fitness for a purpose for which such specified article is ordinarily or generally sold. So, um, even if there is a brand name, hindi naman automatically wala ng implied warranty of merchantability or fitness for a purpose 
uh, for which a uh, specified article is ordinarily or generally uh, sold. So remember, if there is a trade name or patent, uh, sabi ko nga, it does not preclude yung implied warranty of merchantability or fitness for a purpose. At least, uh, like, like in this example, um, kahit na yung uh, buyer bumili ng specific food, at least there is a warranty that, um, implied warranty that the article sold is fit for human consumption. So, meron pa rin namang mga um, warranties kahit na meron kang binili na specific uh, brand. Kasi di ba pagka brand conscious ka, basta merong brand, sigurado ka. Sigurado ako pagka ganitong brand, walang sira, ganyan-ganyan. Pero, syempre, hindi mo rin naman masasabi uh, kahit na ba yung buyer, dumiskarte siya ng sarili niya and nag-rely siya sa brand name or uh, trade name, patent, ganyan. Uh, obviously, the seller is still um, liable to warrant that the article sold is fit at least for human uh, consumption. Um, what else? Uh, take note of 1564, uh, effect of usage or trade. So, uh, we have already uh, studied that um, wala naman talagang generally implied warranty of fitness. So, uh, however, if there is um, a particular usage of a uh, trade, so nakasanayan na mayroong warranty of uh, fitness, so this will be uh, implied. So, nakasanayan na ini-imply itong uh, warranty of fitness for a particular purpose. So, here yung uh, warranty as to... Ay, warranty as to quality of fitness for a particular purpose is given because of usage of a uh, trade. So, remember here class, um, uh, kahit na walang uh, implied warranty na napag-usapan of fitness because uh, there is yung nakasanayan. So, ay, ito pala. May nakasanayan. Remember that the warranties apply also. But, um, Remember, for usage to bind both parties, it must be known to both of them. And uh, remember is that remember that uh, the, presum the presumption is that the parties are aware of usage of uh, trade. Uh, what else? In 1565, rules regarding merchantability, so fitness for general purpose of goods sold by uh, sample. So take note of the rules. Uh, where the sample is not merchantable, obviously, um, yung uh, bulk of goods will not also be merchantable. Kasi, di ba, sa sale by sample, ang, ang warranty lang naman talaga ng, ang pinapromise lang talaga ng uh, seller dyan is that the goods are same as the sample. So, kung ano yung itsura ng sample, the bulk of goods or yung kabuuan ng goods is the same as the sample. So, if the sample is not merchantable, um, uh, remember that the buyer cannot be, cannot reasonably expect that the bulk of the goods will also be merchantable. Kasi nga, uh, ang kailangan lang naman, kapareho nung sample. So, nakita na ng uh, buyer na hindi merchantable yung um, uh, sample. So, wala siyang right para i-demand that the bulk will be merchantable, as, uh, merchantable unlike in the sample. Kasi nga, ang sabi natin sa sale by sample, kamukha lang ng sample. So, kung hindi merchantable yung sample, edi eh dapat ang i-expect ng buyer, the bulk also not uh, merchantable. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin dyan. So, uh, what else? If um, the sample is subject to a hidden defect, so uh, the defect of the goods here is that inspection will not reveal yung uh, defect. So if the sample is subject to a latent defect and the buyer relies on the seller's skills or judgment, uh, so the buyer here is, remember, entitled to goods which are like the sample, uh, and also, dapat merchantable din yung goods of that kind and character. So, um, tandaan natin dito, class, na um, implied warranty 
yung uh, seller that the goods are um, free from any defect which will then render them unmerchantable even if the sample has a latent or hidden defect but uh, because uh, the buyer here relied on the again seller skills or judgment uh, the buyer must receive goods same as the sample and the buyer must also receive merchantable uh, goods anyway class uh, in 1481 the contract may be annulled where the bulk of the goods do not correspond with the sample what else um, take note of effect of ignorance of the vendor uh, the vendor here is not aware of um, the vendor is not aware of the hidden uh, false or defect of the thing so the general rule ignorance of the seller does not relieve him from liability to the buyer for any hidden false or defects in the thing as sold so good faith is not a defense available to the seller except uh, the parties may provide otherwise in the contract so this is uh, in by stipulation uh, lagay natin dun na if the buyer if the seller is in good faith uh, he is unaware of the existence of the hidden fault or defect uh, pwedeng uh, wala na siyang liability for a warranty against uh, hidden defects what else uh, if the uh, buyer naman is aware of the hidden defect remember here class that uh, he cannot complain later on uh, here he is assumed to have willfully and voluntarily um, uh, ano ba yun? Um, consented to the risk attendant to the sale so yun ang uh, 1566 uh, please take note also of the doctrines of caveat venditor and also caveat emptor caveat emptor is let the buyer beware yun namang caveat uh, venditor let the seller beware so um, yung let the seller beware is uh, yung making the vendor liable for any hidden uh, faults or defects in the thing sold even if he is not uh, aware so sound price sounds uh, warrants sound article so kung uh, maniningil ka ng uh, tamang presyo dapat yung um, article mo is also maayos na uh, object or article so um, we apply now um, yung doctrine of caveat uh, venditor when it comes to um, uh, warranties yan so uh, yun ang uh, tandaan natin dyan sa caveat venditor and caveat emptor so caveat emptor is still applied in case of uh, yung mga uh, sheriff sale uh, syempre yung buyer he is buying uh, at his own risk sa mga uh, sale ng uh, uh, execution sale ng sheriff also in case of sale of animals under 1574 tax sale so uh, yung nabili mong property na binenta in public auction due to uh, delinquency of uh, tax payment so yun ay uh, tax sale ang tawag nila dyan syempre mas alam nyo yan kayo ang mga CPA hindi naman ako I'm just a mere lawyer so anyway um, itong mga to ay wala naman talagang mga warranties uh, uh, in favor of the buyer so ang rule ng caveat emptor is applicable to these kinds of uh, sale so take note also of uh, 1567 yung uh, remedies of the buyer to enforce uh, warranty so the remedies here are, are alternative choose one stick to it action redhibitoria so an action to withdraw from the contract with right to damages and action quanti minoris or action quanti estimatoria which i have already discussed both of this um, action to the de demand proportionate reduction of the price again with a right to damages so this is available in cases of 1561 62 64 65 and also 66 what else uh, 1568 effects of loss of the thing sold on account of hidden defects so nawala yung article or yung object because of the hidden uh, defect so anyway these are the rules if the vendor is aware of the hidden defects the vendor um, shall bear the loss because he acted in 
bad faith. So, alam naman talaga niya na mayroong hidden defect yung binenta niya na sasakyan. So, the uh, seller will bear the risk of loss because of his uh, bad faith. So, the vendi buyer may recover, remember, the price paid, expenses of the contract if he paid for it, and also damages. So, what else? If the vendor is not aware of the hidden defect. So, the vendor sells a car to you not knowing that it has hidden defects. So, um, uh, the, if the defect here is, is hidden to both the buyer and the seller. But in number one or letter A, the defect is hidden to the buyer but not to the seller. So anyway, the vendor is not aware of them. He shall not be liable for damages. So no damages because he is not guilty of bad faith. So ang liability niya is price paid, interest thereon, uh, expenses of the contract if paid by the, by the uh, buyer. So yun ang liability but not damages. Uh, what about the effect of loss of a defective thing? So remember here, the thing is has a hidden defect. So and uh, kahit na may hidden, bukod sa may hidden defect pa siya, na wala pa siya. So the rule is actually, uh, yung uh, object if it is lost through a fortuitous event or through the fault of the buyer, the loss is suffered by the buyer, of course. But uh, based on the doctrine of res perit domino, owner bears risk of loss. And also, if the thing has no hidden defects, syempre, wala talagang liability ang seller dyan. Uh, now, what if the object is defective or meron siyang uh, hidden defect? So, remember, class, that the seller is obliged to return price paid less the value of the thing at the time of the loss. So, vendor is still liable based on his uh, warranty, even if the object is uh, lost. Now, remember here, class, uh, yung different difference between price paid for the thing and the value at the time of the loss. So, ito yung um, value niya at the time of the loss, at saka ito yung binayad ng buyer. Remember, yung difference nun will represent the damages suffered by the buyer, and at the same time, this is the amount by which the vendor enriched himself at the expense of the uh, vendee. So, if the vendor acted in bad faith, he will also be liable for damages. Anyway, the example in your book is on point. So, seller sold to buyer... Uh, a vessel. <clears throat> so the vessel, let us say, is vessel. Bangkaya ta, nakalimutan ko na ship. I, I'm, I have no idea. So anyway, the vessel uh, or the ship, the bangka is worth 50,000 pesos. Well, hindi ko rin alam kung magkano ang bangka, no? So anyway, um, there are defects doon sa engine ng uh, vessel. Motorboat siya, sabihin na lang natin. Yung motor bangka. So, syempre mahal yung motorboat talaga ng motorboat. Motor bangka. So, there is a defect in the um, engine of the motor uh, bangka. So, uh, hidden ito. So, the buyer is not uh, aware. So, anyway, uh, to repair yung um, um, defect in the engine, uh, the buyer would need, uh, let us say, 10,000 uh, pesos to repair yung uh, defect. So, anyway, um, if, let us say, through the fault of the buyer, uh, or, anyway, before that, um, the seller was able to um, make yung buyer waive yung kanyang warranty against uh, hidden defects. So, the seller is aware of this uh, defect doon sa, uh, doon sa vessel, pero uh, napa, nakakuha pa rin siya ng uh, waiver, against hidden uh, waiver on the warranty against hidden defects uh, doon noong uh, buyer. So, anyway... Uh, through the fault of the buyer na lang, let us say that the vessel, um, uh, siguro nabangga siya, nag-collapse, dumubog, etc. Whatever, for whatever reason, basta it is the fault of uh, the buyer. So, remember class that the seller is nevertheless bound to return the purchase price of 50,000 pesos paid by the buyer. But again, less uh, 40,000 pesos. Bakit? Because, uh, remember, that is the value of the vessel at the time of uh, loss. So, ang value talaga ng vessel na yan is um, 40,000, uh, less yung value ng vessel, uh, less yung ano ba, value ng vessel at the time of uh, loss. So, uh, here, dapat wala nang babayaran ang seller, di ba? Because the loss is because of the fault of the buyer. But uh, he has to return yung purchase price kasi defective pa rin yung object na binigay niya. But again, less the value, uh, 40000 Kasi remember, uh, 
15 na bili, pero kay, may kailangan pa repair, gagasos ng uh, 10 na uh, ex, na gagasos ng 10. So, ang actual value lang talaga niyang uh, object is uh, 40,000 pesos. So, 50 less 40, ang ibabalik lang talaga ng buyer dyan. And ang seller dyan to the buyer is uh, 10,000 pesos. And also here, the buyer, is, the seller is in bad faith. Uh, he is still liable for uh, damages. The waiver made by the buyer is obviously void. Uh, what else? Uh, take note of 1570, the preceding articles apply to judicial sales. So, uh, while the preceding articles apply to judicial sales, there is still no liability for damages against the judgment debtor. So, um, yung mga pre previous uh, articles um, applies to judicial sales also or yung sales uh, through by the order of the court but uh, the judgment debtor, kung halimbawa meron siyang um, uh, na-violate yung warranty against hidden defects, na-violate yung warranty against eviction, mag apply yung mga rules pero the uh, seller, the owner of the uh, thing or yung judgment debtor will not be liable for damages because uh, here, sapilitan kasi yung pagbibenta. Di naman talaga gusto. This is a sale against the will of the owner of the thing. So what else? 1571, prescriptive period for uh, bringing an action for rescission of the contract or reduction of the purchase price. Redhibitoria or quantum minoris is... Um, six months from uh, delivery. So anyway, if you notify the seller of the hidden defect, um, but you did not uh, sue or file an action, the action will, of course, the action, the right to file an action will, of course, uh, prescribe. 1572 talks about a sale of two or more animals together. So the general rule here is um, if two or more animals have been sold at the same time, and there is a redhibitory defect in one of them or some of them but not in all so remember the general rule is that uh, yung defect will defect of one will not affect yung uh, others which are not defective so immaterial whether the price is for a lump sum or for a uh, separate price for each animal so anyway um, exception if it can be shown that the vendee would not have purchased uh, yung walang defect kung uh, hindi kasama yung may uh, defect. Uh, bibilin, usually, ito yung uh, lovebirds, ganyan. So, yung, alam mo na, lovebirds, usually, binibili mo yan by pair. So, bibili ka ng isang babae, isang lalaki, para magkaroon sila ng maraming anak-anakan dyan. So, anyway, um, yung pala, yung uh, babaeng ibon is baog pala. So, anyway, hindi mo bibili yung lalaki kung alam mo lang na yung kasamahan niyang babae is baog pala. So, if it can be shown, class, that the um, buyer would not have bought yung uh, lalaking uh, lovebird if uh, not for the, um, kung hindi kasama yung babaeng lovebird, which turns out to be defective, remember, there is an uh, exception. So, uh, yung redhibitory defect of one will uh, affect yung others which are not uh, defective. So, anyway, um, ano ba yan? Uh, what else? Um, also, take note here in 1572, uh, it provides that um, a redhibitory action or action redhibitoria can be uh, filed. But uh, even if not provided, take note also that uh, an action quantum minoris may be filed instead uh, of uh, yung uh, action redhibitoria. In 1573, sale of two or more things together. So points considered in the preceding article also apply to sale. So rule a while ago is also applicable to a sale of two or more things where only one of them but not all have hidden defects. So, kanina, sale of animals. Now, it also applies to uh, things. So, one thing is defective, the other one is not defective. So, usually, the defect of one uh, will not uh, affect yung uh, others which are not defective. But, uh, again, if hindi mo bibili yung isang yan, kung wala yung kasama niyang defective, remember that um, the seller, the buyer, can be entitled to uh, file an action uh, to rescind yung entire uh, sale. So, 1574 talks about a uh, sale of 
animals uh, at fairs, public auctions, or as condemned. So remember, there is no warranty against hidden defects. So this is based on the assumption that the defects must have been clearly known to the buyer since he is buying at a fair, public auctions, or young animals as uh, condemned. So uh, remember here that the law does not make any distinction. The public auctions may be judicial or extrajudicial. Yung sale of animals as condemned precludes all idea. Talagang walang uh, warranty against hidden defects. So ang mga animals na to, uh, binibili not because of the quality or capacity for work. Yung, uh, yung uh, livestock uh, condemned, uh, usually para sa ano na lang yan, i uh, kakainin ganyan, etc., etc. So the fact that the livestock is condemned must be communicated to the buyer. Otherwise, the sale is... Um, uh, otherwise, the seller is uh, liable. So, condemned ito. Kumbaga parang um, uh, uh, sequestered by uh, the court. So, binibenta na lang nila talaga itong mga um, uh, animals na to, not for their uh, quality or capacity for work, but for any other uh, purpose. So, anyway, um, wala talagang uh, warranties dyan. Uh, in 1575, uh, sale of animals um, which are void because of public policy, obvious laman. Animals suffering for, from contagious diseases. Just, alam nga naman, bilhin nyo pa, eh, meron nga sakit, eh, kumahawa kayo ng sakit. Uh, what else? Those uh, found unfit for the service uh, stated. So, these are, remember, void uh, sales, which we have studied when we studied Chapter 9 of uh, the Law on Contracts. Anyway, in 15... Uh, 76, it talks about the red hibitory defects or hidden defects of animals. Uh, pagka red hibitory defects of animals, even in case of professional inspection, hindi pa rin ito sapat para ma-discover yung uh, hidden defect na ito. So anyway, the rule is, the rule is um, it must be of such nature that expert knowledge is not sufficient to discover it. So, the defect is not only hidden, pero even if mayroon ng expert, it is not sufficient to discover it. Now, also take note that if the vet veterinarian failed to discover it because of his ignorance or failed to disclose it to the buyer because of his, his bad faith, the veterinarian is liable for damages, not the vendor. Mahirap pala maging veterinario, no? Madadamay ka pa. What else? Um, take note of 1577, limitation of action in sale of animals. So, um, this redhibitory action based on uh, defaults, uh, based on defects in animals, shall be uh, brought within a period of 40 days from the date of delivery to the uh, vendi. So, uh, 40 days is the prescriptive uh, period. So, um, what are considered as redhibitory defects are also only those who are which are determined by law or by uh, customs. If the defects are obvious or patent, there is no warranty against hidden defects, even if there is a redhibitory vice. So, kung may aso kayo binili, nakita nyo naman na pilay siya, or tatlo lang yung paa niya, remember, uh, that is a patent defect and walang warranty against uh, such defect even if defective talaga siya. So there is really red vision, but uh, there is no warranty for that because it is not a hidden uh, defect. In 1578, if the animal dies um, of a disease uh, within three days, so yung binentang animal sa iyo is so, uh, suffering from a disease at the time of sale. So medyo may lagnat yung binili mong uh, kalabaw, ganyan. The vendor is liable should it die of the said disease, within three days from the date of uh, sale, not uh, the date of delivery. So it can happen that um, hindi pa na deliver sa'yo, but it is already uh, sold, paid for, etc. Um, there is no actual delivery yet, but it dies within uh, three days from the date of sale. Remember, class, uh, the vendor is uh, liable. So the claim of the vendee also must be based on the finding of an expert that the deceased causing the death existed at the time of contract. So, anyway, um, if the death occurs after three days, after three days na, or the defect is patent or visible, 
the seller is not liable against uh, hidden uh, defects. So remember here, class, that there must be expert finding um, na yung disease is already existent at the time of uh, sale. So take note also, if the loss is caused by a fortuitous event or by the fault of the vendee, and the animal has vices, 1569 should uh, apply. So anyway, um, the liability of buyer in case of uh, sale of animal is uh, rescinded. So in case uh, the vendee avails himself of the remedies in 1567, uh, remember class that the vendee, siyempre, uh, re rescission implies mutual restitution. So anyway, uh, the vendee must return the animal in the condition in which it was sold, in which it was at the time it was sold and delivered, and in case of injury due to the negligence of the uh, buyer, the buyer will be responsible, but this would not be an obst obstacle to the rescission of the contract due to the redhibitory defect or fault of the animal. In 1580, uh, um, what else? Um, alternative remedies in uh, the of the vendee in case of sale of animals. So, same uh, uh, actions or remedies, e either an action redhibitoria or an action quanti minoris, but the same must be bought within uh, 40 days from the date of delivery of the animal to the uh, vendee. Um, what else? Uh, sale of large cattle is governed by the uh, revised administrative uh, code. So anyway, um, that's it for uh, chapter four of the law on sales. Uh, we will have our quiz this week plus. So um, please uh, prepare. Anyway, uh, please stand by also for chapters four, uh, chapters five, uh, which is a relatively short uh, chapter. So anyway, uh, class, thank you and good night.